Welcome back to the Europe Netball Open Challenge 2022. Live here at the Isle of Man, we are at the National Sports Centre in Douglas and oh my goodness me, what a last couple of days we have had. We have had all the games played apart from one from those round games early on. As we said right from the beginning, eight teams participating in this event. Cayman Islands, Gibraltar, host the Isle of Man, Israel, Malta, Republic of Ireland, Switzerland and UAE. They've been split into two groups. Group B is done. They are all ready to go into the next round. But Group A, we still have one game left on court for you. Gibraltar take on the Cayman Islands. Gibraltar have won all of their games so far. Cayman Islands have only won one. This game will depend on where everyone finishes. If Gibraltar win, they'll finish top of their group. If the Cayman Islands win, then it all goes down to how many goals have been scored. And quite frankly, it's been so fast paced and so much gone on, I would have no idea where everyone would finish. We will be able to tell you at the end of this match. Make sure you don't go anywhere. It's going to be fast. It's going to be furious. There's going to be so much action. It's unbelievable. And it's all right here. We will bring you the starting sevens after the break. Shoot from here. Yeah. Oh, oh what an goodness. Set. Oh, nice quick hand yeah. between guard and Nice. Lovely shot. Give a little bit of confidence going into half time. Oh, lovely oh. shot. <laughs> Welcome back to the Europe Netball Open Challenge here in the Isle of Man. We are live at the National Sports Centre in Douglas. I am Natalie Pepperell and I'm joined luckily by the amazing Deb Jones, head coach for UAE. Um, we were saying last time when we talked about you on the bench, you used to play for England, so wealth of experience sat next to me. Yeah, I did, many moons ago, many moons ago. Um, yeah, and I've um, you know, been really enjoying the netball this weekend. There's some fantastic stuff out there. I, I heard that somebody had said the, last, uh, the game that we played against Diamond was a little bit like look, uh, watching a Super League game. And I know that Luch and I were both sitting itching trying to get you know wanting to get our trainers on and get off the bench and get onto the court it was that exciting <laughs> absolutely fabulous and you know what i would totally agree with that comment the standard of this competition has just grown and grown and i'd say you know there's four teams fighting for that top position at the moment and i wouldn't put money on any of them at the moment yeah 
absolutely. It's just been fantastic to see him. You know, everybody wants a bite of the cherry, don't they? They all want to take that trophy home. And it's brilliant that everybody, you know, sometimes it's going down to the last quarters and that every goal counts. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this game and hoping that this brings something special too. Absolutely. The starting lineups then for you, the Cayman Islands. Goal shooter, Alexis Karayas. Goal attack, Ashley Logan. Wing attack, Gidrian Gardner. Centre, Josephine Fringpong. Wing defence, Ariana Grant. Goal defence, Nakesha Lynch. And goalkeeper, Nikisha Lewis. Coach is Lynette Monteith. Forward Gibraltar, goal shooter, Megan Martinez. Goal attack, Amy Poso. Wing attack, Anna Hernandez. Centre, Joelle Moreno. Wing defence, Lanaya Ocaña. Goal defence, Zaini Gillingwater. And goalkeeper, Isabella McQuiston. And the coach is Sarah Payas. Your umpires for today are Gillian Leslie, Sonia Thomas, and the reserve umpire is Laura Lovett. So Gibraltar going for their strong lineup. They're not taking any of this game for granted. And we have the start with Josephine Fringpong for the Cayman Islands. Unfortunately, Catherine Gao, who went down in the last match, their captain has a boot on the bench, so I don't think she'll be returning. That'll be interesting to see how they respond to that. You know, I'm sure the captain will be really vocal from the bench, but actually on the court, how they're going to adjust and you know change their tactics accordingly with new players on. Oh, great! <laughs> great take there by the goalkeeper. You know, it's really important that they capitalise on this now and make use of the turnover. Oh, not if Okanya has anything to do with it. We'll and see. that's you know that's crucial for teams to be able to when they turn over ball to make, make sure they treasure it and get it up to a shooting opportunity. But all credit to Gibraltar for turning that back over and making use of it for themselves. Turnover ball leaves Jib the opportunity to go ahead and stamp authority early on this game. And that's really important for them to recognise now that you know safe passage to goal is important to go two goals up. You know, turning over ball again will really put them ahead in this game. Broken call. Just shifts almost the sense pass forward. Oh, Great right. shot. And we've seen that from Logan. I'm not really sure. What's yeah, happening here? She should call tight, Natalie. We saw quite a few people go down. Is it a goal? It is a goal. Not really sure what happened there, but Ashley Logan has shot well in the past when she's had the opportunities. That'd be disappointing for them if they if um, Ashley's got to come off with an injury, you know, to go um, two attacking players down. Yeah, they certainly don't want to risk that, although Deidreanne Gardner, who's playing wing attack for the Cayman Islands, was shooting outstandingly today, so... Yeah, good hands there by um, Poza. Contact called. Ooh. I was just about to say she did really well to keep that in front of Yeah, the Cayman Islands need to be careful of um, Gibraltar arms. They're causing a bit of damage in there. Nice shot, she looked really comfortable on the ball then. Martinez has been a standout player for Gibraltar, sinking her shots. She's certainly made massive progress over the last couple of years. Good that Gibraltar girls are trying to like, close down the second phase and having to force that backwards. I'm sure that's part of their, their game plan to push them high. Absolutely. Force try and for, you have to try and force a long ball. Let the let the defenders see that. Turn it over. Something I'm sure you're watching. Isabel McQuiston and Zaini Gillingwater at the back are have been brilliant again all tournament. Uh, nice and patient on the ball, Gibraltar. I think that's one of the key standouts for me that they you know they are really patient, trying to work it into the shooters, and then the shooters make use of it. Four one up. And something I'm sure they've been working on under pressure in the past. We've seen them crack so far this tournament. I haven't really seen them crack under the pressure. I'm sure they'll be hoping that that doesn't happen and we don't see it at all. Yeah, the Cayman Islands need to come back now. You know, that's one of a few goals with no answer. Good back up. Fringpong. 
Price out of the circle finds Gardner. Lovely That's ball. Great, great feeding. Now I see, you know, working the ball underneath the post there. That that works really well for them. You know, more of the same feeding from the circle edge. Let's see if they can do that more often in this game. Oh, well said, unfortunate. Given away there by Lynch. Lewis read it well. Nice, comfortable. E easy goal there for Gibraltar. Yeah, good hands. Great turnover. They need more options on the line, Cayman. And being closed and up by Gibraltar, forcing ball, unnecessary ball. Nice shot. Comfortable, comfortable. Which is where she wants to be. It'd be interesting to watch to see if the defence change um, their tactics at the minute. You know, they've only got one one on one. That's not worked for them for seven goals. They've had different defensive units within this tournament, so they could well change it up. But this does seem to be the preferred unit for the Cayman Islands, but I think the rotation of Gibraltar doesn't suit them, does it? Not if they're going to follow. Yeah. They did put on a little bit of a zone in one of their games. It would be much better to see that. Oh, nice take. Well read. The, the defensive unit need to drive that ball through, though. The wing attack was playing really high there. Gardner shouldn't be that high up the court. It'd be really good to see Grant and Lynch drive the ball down. And it is interesting that you say that because I don't think we've really seen the back defensive unit come up with any intent yeah, in they, any game. There needs to be much more intensity, much more depth. They need to do some prelim moves. At the minute, it just feels quite static. You know, they're making, they're making um, the life of the, of the Gibraltar team really easy to turn over ball. They're trying to get ball side, push them away. Nice take, well read. Oh, just unfortunate there that it was an obstruction call. Lovely by Carias. Oh. oh, nice early feed in. Logan likes playing underneath the post. It looks like she's still struggling with the knee, though. I'm not sure how many options they have on the bench that are fit. Quite a few went down at various different points in time. Let's hope Logan can last the game for them, then. And if she's struggling, maybe a potential switch there and have Alex, Alexis Carias come out. Ooh, nice ball. Good ball there from Pozo to Martinez, and good that Martinez then finished off that shot. 83 up, let's see if the Cayman Islands can turn this ball and get something back. Different mix up for them, having Pozo come out and Hernandez on the second phase. Yeah, they're just not closing ball down, Natalie, are they? You know, when as soon as they've released the ball, they're not stepping up, they're giving them too much space to run. Nice. Really important for Lewis to switch on to that. You know, as soon as the ball's been released, she could have moved in and gotten a, a good present at the defensive position. I'm not sure she 100% understood what was <laughs> happening, to be fair. Great shot again, and like you say from Logan, finding herself underneath that post, they're working that well. Yeah, and the game's still within their reach, you know, three turnovers. But they've got to work hard to get that ball back. She looks very comfortable on the ball, Martinez. And I know that you were saying that she's been playing really well throughout the tournament. But certainly something that they've got to close down. And in the minute, they're just not, not being able to do that. Yeah, and I think as well, you know, this morning, they a reasonably easy ride for them against Switzerland. They won that game 72-9. So, you know, they're coming into this game, although their second game often you know, unreasonably fresh legs. Yeah, you know, which is good for them. Running out different combinations, getting, you know, maybe new caps and, you know, those that have got less experience out on the court. That's great for a team as well. And like you said, saving legs too. Absolutely. Again, another comfortable shot there. 11 4 up, you know, four turnovers the Cayman need, but they really need to step up another gear now to be able to take this back from Jib. 
And we've seen too often in this tournament that the first quarter scores have made a, a real difference. It's a lot harder to chase a scoreline than it is to hold a lead, or so it seems. Yeah, I know, and, and taking loose ball like that, you know, Pozo worked really hard to get that ball and keep that ball on the court. You know, when balls are out there like that, 50-50 came and need to be switched on to try and take that. Good stretch. Oh, and a nice take. Much better rebound there, but this is where you want them to drive through. Yeah, it is, you know, from the defence, you know, they're behind the ball, they need to get ball side, they need to do some front cuts, drive through the middle of the court. The attackers need to be disciplined and stay back though to give the defence room to be able to do that. Oh, well read by Gillingwater. Although if I'm being really picky, she could have got that with two hands. Yeah, uh, <laughs> absolutely. But a bit of disguise on the ball as well. You know, that was pretty telegraphed into the shooting circle there. Good that they're starting to think now and play the ball around. Opening up options, not forcing it into the shooters. Yeah, just bounced off the cryos. Yeah, I think I, I know that the shooters have talked a lot, Nat, about the, the post being really bouncy as well. You're not the first person to say that, <laughs> funnily enough. <laughs> I think sometimes, though, when the defenders are running into it, it probably helps them a little bit, to be fair. She's there on the back up. Yeah, the Cape, Cape and Islands need to open up the width of the court. At the minute, I feel like, you know, the Gibraltar team are actually keeping them to one side and they're playing into that area rather than opening it up and swinging the ball and, get, you know, getting the defenders' heads turning. Oh, unlucky there. Good hands by Moreno, forcing that off the back line, off one of the Cayman Island girls. And that's the thing with Joel Moreno, is she will go for everything. Yeah, you know, and we, we can't be affording, when you're down in a game, you can't be affording to let the defence drive through the ball like that, uncontested. Logan and Gordon re really need to step up. They might have attacking bibs on, but they really need to do some defensive work to turn over the ball for their team. You know, when you're in this, it's got to be a seven-man defence to turn it over. You know, you can see there, you know, the Gibraltar girls, are, you know, hands over, mid-court, go to second wing attack, they're really putting pressure on the line, putting pressure on the ball, making it difficult. And making the back look open and then running on that intercept. Yeah, and that's what you do, isn't it? You know, if you put pressure down through the court, you want lifted ball up and for the defence to, you know, get the uh, fruits of your labour as well. Much better as well from Lewis at the back. Just trying to run on that ball. Good hands, let's see if they can hold them now. Lewis needs to get tighter on. Interesting that Martinez is choosing to play out of the circle as well now. Good use of triangles there. Top to side and back in. Nice shot. I remember Pozo as a youngster actually, being really comfortable from, from anywhere in the circle. She used to love her long shots. Wonder if she'd fancy a, a pop-up being in the uh, Sun Cup and having some two pointers in the last five minutes now. Yeah, I reckon she would. I reckon she'd absolutely love that. Oh, and okay. I think she thought it was taken. Nice that she settled herself there before the shot as well. 14-4, this is a good opening campaign for Gibraltar. It is, and I th can't help but think that the Cayman Islands are really missing Gao. She was a driver in that middle. Yeah, and there's another the opportunity, you know, Gibraltar pushing the um, Cayman Islands out to the sideline, forcing lifted ball, taking that intercept. That's, that's great. Great play from them. You know, they're creating opportunities for themselves. Good middle by Okanya. Yeah, and the Cayman Islands girls, not, you know, they're not looking to even start first fa uh, second phase. Not closing off first phase either. Poso struggling to get up from this one, but I think maybe she's a bit winded. Time is called. I would imagine we'll see potential of Courtney Ferrer or Megan Ruiz coming on. It'd be good, it'd be good to, um, you know, 50. 15 four up, they can afford to make changes as well, Nat, can't they, you know, pr to protect her. Absolutely. Ruiz is the one that gets the nod to take to the court in that goal attack position. 
a stranger to the court this tournament and has done an equally good job actually as Pozo. Yeah, and it's really nice to be able to roll your bench, isn't it? You know, you're 16 4 up. This is a luxurious position for a coach to be in now. You know, you can play around. You know, the, the, Cayman, the Cayman Islands, you know, are making their own errors in some ways. You know, I talk to players about winning and losing games. And when you're making your own errors, you're the one that's losing the game, not necessarily the opposition winning. But, you know, all credit to Gibraltar. They're playing some great netball in the minute. They're forcing some of the errors that the Cayman Islands girls are making. And when the score's this much, sometimes do you find that it's hard for players to, to stay focused and keep pushing on? Yeah, it is. But, you know, that's when, as a coaching team, you need to be able to set your, your team goals. And they need, to be able, you, they need to remain focused to achieve those goals and not necessarily the ones that you went on the court with. You know, you've got to adapt your play, haven't you? Absolutely. You know, you've got to practice sometimes what you might want to put out on the court tomorrow. And that might not be the kind of long balls and things that you might be able to put in this game and be all disciplined. Good swing. Yeah, Enjoy. good vision there. Oh, <laughs> well picked up, Ruiz. And a lovely shot as well. Yeah, that'll be a nice settler for her coming on and scoring that. See, the Cayman Islands girls are not stopping anything second phase now, you know. A second phase deep like that, they, they, they could have turned and put it in to be fair. A huge first quarter for Gibraltar, 17 goals scored, Cayman Islands 4. Yeah, the Gibraltar team should be really pleased with that performance, you know, capitalising on lots of the errors that the Cayman Islands are making. I actually feel like the Cayman Islands girls just need to step on the court, you know. I know that they're there and they're a seven on, but for a little bit more urgency from them, they can get to some of those balls, but we need a little bit more intensity from them. Maybe a little bit more calling from the bench, you know. But ultimately, when the players are on the court, your coaching is done. The girls need to want that themselves, you know. That's a big scoreline to come back from now. It'll be interesting to see who the, the stand-up players are. Obviously, Rocket potentially being put into the mix from the coaches, but like you say, it needs somebody on court as well, doesn't it, to be that leader to take control and to say, come on, this isn't good enough. Yeah, and, you know, looking at the games from the past, you know, have they been able to do that? They're now 13 goals adrift in this. For, you know, for me, they need to draw a line underneath that. Yeah, that, that's, that's only one quarter. They've got three quarters left to make a difference. You know, do they want to be the team that's beaten in every quarter like that? Or actually, do they want to make a stand and say, do you know what, next quarter we start at nil all. What does this look like for us? Can we come back at them? What can we do to turn over ball? And that is a championship coach. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Chipping away at the scoreline, you know, that's one. You've got 45 minutes now to make a difference. Yeah, that's a big scoreline, 13 goals. I remember going into playing a Super League game way back when. Going in, 10 goals adrift. Um, I, think Mag I think Maggie Jackson was coaching the opposition, actually. In fact, I know she was coaching the opposition. But, um, you know, we were 10 goals adrift, three-quarter time, and went, up, went on to win the game. You know, so put, putting 12 goals on the opposition. So it is doable, it's not impossible to come back, but we really need to see more from the Cayman Islands girls if they want to do that, because the Gibraltar girls want to go out on the top. Absolutely, they've had some great results. They've played an amazing game against the Island Man. They don't want to throw this, they want to go out as, you know, um, winners of their section. In some ways, you know, for us, that's great because I'm really looking forward to playing Gibraltar. You know, it's months since we played them. We played them last October. Really competitive game. They'll want to win this, absolutely. And they'll want to win it convincingly because they'll want to show the type of kind of team that they are. I know that Denise will be watching this from home. I hope you're all right, Denise. Um, and I'm hoping that they're putting into practice some of the things that you wanted to put in pra into practice on the court. <laughs> Feel free to message us, Denise, as well, and tell us your thoughts or tell us your tactics. Or Deb actually said, can you tell her your tactics for tomorrow so that uh, she knows how you're going to play? <laughs> oh, it's quite fun, that, isn't it? Um, so looking at this, what are you picking up for tomorrow? Can you share any of that? or uh... None. I'm not going to share one <laughs> tip or tactic with you or the audience. I just I say to the girls, what goes on tour stays on tour. Whatever happens in our meeting room stays in our meeting room. We do our talking on the court, not off it. I'm so going to keep asking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have to find different ways of asking, see if we can find out something of it. Uh, do you think we'll see any changes here from either side? Uh, but do you know what? I'm hoping the Gibraltar team will actually make some changes and play around with some of their combinations. It's really nice to be that far up and have the luxury to be able to try things as a coach that maybe you wouldn't on an international court. You know, it's nice to put other players out there and, you know, let's see if they do. I hope they do. I think that would be really nice. How much as well do you have to take into account, you know, who you're playing tomorrow? They're obviously looking at 
potentially facing you as long as they win this game yeah. and how much do they need to keep who they might play tomorrow on the court so they solidify all of those yeah, lengths as well. Yeah, but they've also got the luxury of being able to, you know, play, you know, take them off and rest their legs too. You know, that's important. At some point, yeah, absolutely expose them on the court. They might want to finish with quite a few of the plays that they want to start with tomorrow just so they feel like they're in the game. But to be honest, you know, rolling players on and off, they've got lots of combinations out there. Yeah, as a coach, I would do that. 17 for it, absolutely. I'd be running my girls out and resting legs ready for tomorrow. So actually what you're hoping is that they run these guys out for a really long time. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Looking at the players coming back onto the court, I think they are going to keep the same. There's no difference for Gibraltar that I can see. However, there are some differences for the Cayman Islanders. The Cayman Islands. Well, let's see if that makes a difference to their, their play. Like, like I said, you know, nil all in my eyes. Let's see what they come out with in, in this quarter. Deidre Ann Gardner goes into the goal attack position, which for me is absolutely key. She had a stonker at that position before um, Ashley Logan comes out to wing attack. Great, and you talked about her, didn't you, at the beginning of the game and saying that she'd been playing brilliantly at the goal attack. So let's see what she just got. I'm really excited to watch her. Tamara Oliver comes on at wing defence and... Latoya Anderson comes on at centre. Let's see if this brings them the urgency that they need and the intensity and the drive to put the uh, Gibraltar girls under pressure. And sometimes that's what you need to do as a coach, isn't it? Say, right, you've gone out there, you didn't necessarily perform as I wanted you to, so this is now your opportunity for yeah, someone else to go. Her, shooting from the edge. You know, that's great. Newfound confidence from them. Great noise from the bench as well. That, that's enough to lift your team too, you know, hearing that encouragement. The bench went really quiet in the last quarter. Good rebound from Gillingwater. Oh, lovely. And look, it's that quick, quick, quick reaction as well. You know, you've got to transition from, from attacking to defence. You've got to get your feet round. If, you, if you're missing ball and going for the first, first time ball, get round, get hands over ball. Not necessarily get, oh yeah, it is a turnover. I was going to say not necessarily getting the ball, but it just seem a bit more urgency from the Cayman Islands. Yeah, and then and then preferably not, not giving it away when you've got that turned over. And look, your defence are driving through the court. They listened. <laughs> Tamara Oliver. A wing defence. Oh. I'm glad that I've got the microphone now, now, because having shouted from the sideline on a couple of games, I'm actually really hoarse. My voice doesn't normally sound like this. You liar. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, th this, this passage of play is really nice. It, the Gibraltar girls are finding each other, but the Cayman Islands, are, you know, they're backing off at every stage. They're letting them run through the court. It's really lovely for them to have the run of the court, but actually the, the Cayman Islands need to step up defensively. Yeah, Ashley Logan there seems to have struggled to go up, so I think there's going to be another change here. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Oh, I would hope that the teams all get together, Natalie. You know, yeah. pull your teams in, have a bit of a chat, really concentrate, don't focus on the injured player that's gone down. That was really difficult. You know, in, in the first game, we look at, as coaches, as, you know, what ifs? What if a player goes down? What are you going to do? You know, what if something's being called against you constantly? How do you react to that? You know, all, all of those things are really important. Good that the Gibraltar girls got round, had a, had a bit of a chat there, but that would have been really important for the Cayman Islands team to get around and pull their team together too. It, it's a bit like a, it's not a tactical timeout, but it's a little bit like that. It gives you an opportunity to talk as a team to sort things out if things are going wrong. Absolutely. Good to see that Ashley Logan managed to walk off the court as well. So she will get some attention. Physios do a fantastic job. Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few tapings out there on the court now, you know. Either the games have been really hard or some players are, you know, coming in with um, little niggles already. Kay and Clark comes on at the wing attack position, replacing Ashley Logan. It'd be really nice to see these Cayman Islands. The Cayman Islands girls are really rangy, but I just think that their feet need to a little bit, be a little bit quicker. They need to take the feet to the ball. And I think if they did that, they would, you know, pick off a lot more. Yeah, and the, the reach from the defence is good, but they're on one foot, which stops them from then moving their feet, doesn't it? Yeah.
you know, allowing to, uh, allowing <laughs> allowing the opposition to 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 set two upon against them. I just feel like they're a little bit asleep in the circle. They need to wake up a little bit, put a little bit more pressure on. You know, delay the running from the goal attack into the circle. They're just being given too much free reign. They're a little bit quiet as well now. I'm sitting here actually holding back. I want to shout at them, you know, <laughs> right and left. I'm really struggling to keep it together. I think Lewis, in fairness, is, is reading it quite well and stepping off. But I think, like, looking at her face, she's very much concentrated on her game. Yeah, and, 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 and defensive units don't work like that, do they? You know, the communication element of it is absolutely crucial because your goal defence sometimes is coming into the circle. She's playing blind. She's looking for her keeper to call to her. Alexis Cryas at the back shouting at her team, trying to lift them. They do need, need lifting, you know, psychologically, a 19-6 uh, you know, deficit, that, that's a really difficult place to be, but it's really important to keep pushing on and, and keep the pressure on, and only then will you start turning over ball. Nice space at the back by Ruiz. Yeah, great exploitation of that, noticing that the, the, you know, the defensive unit are not really switched on, they've got the play, the, the run of the circle, the shooters. Nice, nice shot. More pressure on the shot, I think, than it is needed. They're not boxing out the shot either. Good forward cover from Gibraltar. Nice drive through. Yeah, that's about four passes, Natalie, in the centre third of the centre pass. Oh, oh what a great shot. That clearly is at a sweet spot. A sweet spot. That's a second shot from that place. Alexis Karayas. Nice hands in from Lewis. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's what they need to do a little bit more of. Shoot from the edge, lift the team. Absolutely. <laughs> no pressure, Alexis. <laughs> cool, there's a cucumber down the other side for Ruiz. Yeah, they look really calm, don't they? Both on and off the ball working for each other as a team. This is a really comfortable scoreline for them. Ooh. Oh, I, I think the Cayman Islands were extremely lucky there. <laughs> and that's your politically correct answer. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, unfortunately there for Didrian. Oh, nice quick pass by Alexis Cryas. Yes. And I'm glad to see that they took the opportunity now to capitalised on that. And that's what we saw from her earlier today. Contact call. Yeah, unusual for the Gibraltar team to have to force that ball backwards. They've been really good at putting out um, first time ball at centre pass and forward ball. Nice movement from Karayas. Let's see if it's going to be another long bomb. It's a great pass. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely from Gideon. Yeah, the noise is better as well, isn't it, from the bench. Have already scored more in this quarter than they did in the last one. Yeah. And it's five all. A little bit of confusion there. Obviously not five all overall, but five all in this quarter. Yeah, which is good. You know, they needed to step up, didn't they? And that's what you were saying, taking it quarter by quarter. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we all make mistakes. We all have quarters that don't go our way, but it's about, you know, how you reflect and respond to that. Great interception there on that point footwork. by Tamara Oliver. Yeah, footwork called by the umpire there. That's a real shame, you know, that, that, that for them is crucial, you know, when you're on a roll you need to keep putting your foot on the accelerator. McQuiston to Okanya. Yeah, there's just too much open space, Natalie, through that mid-court, you know, not, not a lot of the balls are contested. Ah, oh, lovely feed by Joel. Gibraltar are just really making good use of that ball there, you know, uncontested ball, ball free-flowing through the middle of the court. Great passages of play from them. Don't forget you can get in touch with us, hashtag Europe Netball. 
thoughts, comments, questions? Can we take anything? Gibraltarians, Gibraltar Netball Association just reminding us on comms it's Gibraltarians, not Gibraltans. Janet Young liking a message. Shona Forbes wishing everyone a good tournament. It's great that you're getting all the feeds through, Natalie. It's really nice to, you know, see that if people can't join us here, that they can actually join us online. You know, a lot of these teams, you know, wouldn't be able to afford to have people flying over, and you know, it's lovely to be able to get those feeds. So keep the comments coming, guys. The Bolton team need to work, a little, uh, sorry, the Cayman Islands need to work a little bit harder to actually get front ball. Oh, lovely drive, Akanya. And I'm sure that's part of uh, Gibraltar's game plan, isn't it? You know, get them on the back, force the high ball. Nice feed again and lovely timing on the drive in. I'm hoping that the, the, co the Cayman Islands coaching team talk about the defensive um, setup at centre pass because at the minute I just feel like Gibraltar are taking advantage of there seems to be little defensive strategy on the first phase at centre pass. <sighs> Better contesting for the ball in the circle. Absolutely. But still managing to capitalise, you know, great score line. Be interesting to know um, what the target was for this, Natalie. Was it a scoreline target? Was it a um, centre pass to goal target? Was it a turnover to goal target for Gibraltar? Let's see. What would you have done? Mm, in interesting. <laughs> see, that's, that, that, that's another one that I don't really want to give away for tomorrow's <laughs> game. Maybe after tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, lovely middle again. Yeah, great use of triangles around the circle. Turn the defence's head, see the space, opens up well. Just won that, Oliver. Yeah, the wing attack and goal attack are getting on the inside and trying to push the wing defence and goal defence wide. footwork call wasn't it? There's been a lot of footwork this tournament. Yeah there has. Interesting for the viewers at home to be able to you know make their own comments on whether they feel that it has been or not. Nice out and in. Not sure she got any closer but potentially a bit more comfortable. Oh. <laughs> Oh no, this is not good news for the Cayman Islands. Center. We got another injury? We do. Latoya Anderson hopping towards the sideline. No. Struggling. Is that an un is that an uncontested injury, um, Matt? We didn't see any contest, but who knows? Like you say, there's been some heavy strapping, so I think it is Frimpong, Josephine Frimpong that comes on as centre, not 100% sure, but we will obviously confirm when we find out, but from what I can see it looks like Frimpong. Interesting how they will respond to this then as a team. Yeah, last time took a bit of a wobble first, didn't they, and then came back again. Is Frimpong, we were right. Let's see if she can make a difference then in the middle. Played up wing attack and centre Frimpong. Still potentially two more days, however, for the Cayman Islands, or two more games at least, um, 
so a bit worrying how quickly their players are falling. Yeah, and the games don't necessarily get easier either, do they, Natalie? No, you know, absolutely Lots not. of good recovery and massage for them tonight. Oh, oh, great, great reading of the play there. That should lift your team, shouldn't it? No, absolutely, and that's what you're looking for at the back, isn't it? You know, players really thrive on that when your back end take great intercepts. It's really important, though, you know, to capitalise on that now. They don't work really hard turning ball over and to not get a shooting opportunity from it. Well taken. Oh! oh. Well, I think she was deemed to be out of court. That's a real shame having worked the ball down there. In the hands of Okanya, or oh, nearly by Frimpong. Yeah, maybe she's going to be a good addition. Um, no, a little bit more intensity through that mid court. Good screen by Ruiz, stop the jump from Lewis. They just look really unfazed in the circle, don't they? Really calm and collected. That's really nice to see as, you know, outside circle players that your shooters take the ball, turn it, and, you know, sometimes you can see them walking back from the circle edge thinking, my oh, shooters have got this. Yeah. Great position to be in as a centre and a wing attack. Nice from Nandes. Oh, good hands in from Oliver. More of the same, please, tomorrow. <laughs> uh, not stopping a baseline run there. And it's interesting because I think Frimpong tried to stop um, Moreno from coming ball side, but actually what Moreno was trying to do was get the space to run the pocket. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, exposing the back door as well and letting the shooter run through. Lynch. Back to Lewis. Frimpong's putting in a stint at centre. Yeah, but you know, Gibraltar are making them work really hard through the mid-court, you know, having to pass ball back. But at least they're looking for the reset. I think they've noticed the time now and just thought, hey, to launch that ball in, nothing to lose. 20 goal deficit, they genuinely have got nothing to lose. Absolutely, 13 goals scored from Gibraltar there, six for Cayman Islands, so a slightly better quarter for the Cayman Islands, but still convincing in the other respect for Gibraltar. Yeah, and, and that's tough, you know, it's tough as a team, it's tough when you've got you know, a variety of injuries. They've had quite a few changes since they started out. You know, I'm sure that wasn't all part of the game plan. You know, for them now, it's about keeping the deficit to as, as minimum as, as possible, isn't it? You know, and not giving Gibraltar necessarily free reign and showing that they, they can come back, you know? We all have to deal with ad adversity, both, uh, you know, uh, as players, don't we, and as a team. And it'll be interesting to see what they put out now and whether they do make any further changes or whether they're going to keep it um, and start the same again. Yeah, in comparison wise, like, obviously, Isla Man and Gibraltar are probably the closest comparison that we can give the Cayman Islands. At half time against the Isle of Man, it was 25 16, so it was a lot closer, but there were still lots of changes then as well. I think, again, I hate to say it, but the key key player for them being Catherine Gow in that centre position, not being on, being the captain as well. And it shouldn't come down to one player, but sometimes, unfortunately in some teams, there is a key player that's a key driver and that player missing does make a bit of an impact. Yeah, it does. But do you know what? Sometimes the leader not being there can give other players the opportunity to shine. And I think that's really important too. And it's really hard, isn't it? You know, it just proves that you can't be a one, you can't be a one man team. You know, the, the team is that. There are seven players on the court and everybody's got an equal opportunity to, you know, lead to step up to the play. International netball is not easy. You know, fitness levels are also absolutely key. And yeah, you can come into, you know, competition with a few niggly injuries and things, but, you know, it's really important to have a strong, fit team to be out on the court, to be able to last the knocks that you get out on the court. You know, 60 minutes of netball is really hard, particularly when the ball's contested all the time. And, and you know, fit, fitness is crucial. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what their S&C um, programme is, but 
you know, maybe we need to look towards that because they, they do look like they're quite heavily strapped. And, you know, I feel really sorry for them having to make lots of different changes and things. But, like I said, it gives the people opportunity and let's see who's, who stands up to the task. I think you can really tell, actually, the, the impact of the fitness. You talk about SNC and and you can see the strength and the... Um almost the athleticism in the athletes and and that really shows between the teams that are coming out on top and the teams that are um, struggling lower down and maybe the teams that are progressing as well the improvements in their um, strength and the improvements in their athleticism across the years and the gains that they're making from that I mean netball tactics and strategies we can talk about triangles and zones and whatever else as much as we like but unless you've got that basic athleticism and the ability to pass the ball accurately and, and the basics none of that really matters yeah yeah and they're all the they're all the one percent gains aren't they you know it's really important to have a really strong program that underpins that it's brutal it can be brutal out there on the court you know that these girls are playing four days two international games in one day and whilst you know some of the scores might not there might be a, a quite a big deficit you're still out there running for 60 minutes you've still got 12 players out on the court recovering from that is really difficult you know, this is Gibraltar's second game of the day, Cayman Islands, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy out on the court and this, this is where it shows. Absolutely. So, as it stands, if Gibraltar are to continue to win this, they will face up against the UAE tomorrow at 3 o'clock, um, which will be an absolutely fabulous game to watch. They're all set to beat Crackers tomorrow. It would mean as well that the Cayman Islands would finish third in their group because they beat Switzerland earlier on in the competition, 37-25. So they would face Israel at nine o'clock in the morning. So that would be also a really tough turnaround from quite, for quite an injured Cayman Island team at the moment to turn around again for a nine o'clock in the morning game. Oh yeah, that is pretty brutal. You know, there'll be some, you know, bruised bodies after this. We're only halfway through the game. They've got another 30 minutes to play. You know, with a score line of 30-10 already, I know that Gibraltar will probably want to push on. You know, the Cayman Islands have got to step up to the plate, but then, you know, they've got to work out, OK, do we go all out in this game or do we actually save ourselves tomorrow morning knowing we've got a nine o'clock game? So that might be the tactics, you know. It doesn't matter about the score line in this particular game. We know where we stand within the section. So, you know, let, let's see, because that could be the reason that they might just go out and just enjoy the next 30 minutes, Natalie. Absolutely, because looking at the bench and the amount that have got injured, it's not like they can rest players and bring players on to rest the legs, because I'm not sure they've got the players left fit yep. to do that. Um, interestingly, talking about changes for Gibraltar, we do have their sheet through early for their changes, so I, I'm assuming that was probably pre-planned. May Truman Davis will come back on at goal shooter. We saw her earlier on today. Janice Moreno will be coming on at wing attack. Ana Hernandez moves from the wing attack to the centre position. Chloe Hernandez takes the place of Lanaya Ocaña on at wing defence. And the back two currently remain the same. Yeah, do you know what? It's really good for Gibraltar as well to get all of their bench on the court. I know we did that um, yesterday. You know, we, I had all four new cats on the court. I'd got the young girls out there. You know, great experience for them on both games. And it was just really nice. It's great for camaraderie. Everybody, every, you know, everybody goes to bed having taken the court, being really confident that they can come on and, you know, put on a show. You never know when you're going to get injuries either. So whilst the team might have a first seven or a first eight on their team that they absolutely want to put out against a real strong um, opponent. If you've exposed players the day before or, you know, the game before and they're feeling really confident coming on the court, you know, that's a great place to be as a coach and as a team as well because you know that they fit really well into that unit. So it'd be really nice to see some of these players today to give them a run out because that could be part of the options ready for tomorrow. Absolutely. Changes as well for the Cayman Islands. We have Kayon Clark going into the goalkeeper position. Um, so she was on at wing attack, she's moving to goalkeeper. Wing attack is Vioris Wright, we've seen her before as well. She's played in the shooter position, so interesting to see Wright come on at wing attack. Goal shooter is Nikisha Lynch, now this is exciting. Lynch that was playing goal defence. She moved to goal shooter in her first game and absolutely nailed it, which means Nikisha Lewis is going to goal defence. So changes all around. This is going to be an interesting quarter. Absolutely. And fortune favours the brave, so they say. <laughs> and it is, you know, they, they can afford to take risks now, can't they? 20 goals adrift. You know, they are, you know, 
from, from what we've seen so far in the first 30 minutes of the game, I don't think they're going to come back at Gibraltar hard. So it would be really nice now just to see them, you know, take a few risks out on the court, make a few changes, see what that looks like, because that might be something that they want to go with tomorrow morning in their first game. But that's going to be really tough tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. I'm glad I'm not any of those Cayman Highlands girls. I you know, it's brutal, isn't it? But, you know, that's the... That was the fight you wanted to um, to finish in the top two because then you get the rest. So it's just unfortunate for the Cayman Islands the way it's fallen that they have that nine o'clock in the morning match. That'll be a good game tomorrow morning, Natalie. Israel, you know, they were, they came out really hard against us and they, they're really nippy. So the Cayman Islands girls are going to have to work really hard in that game too. Absolutely, and I know that Israel will be fighting to try and get that fifth and sixth place rather than the seventh and eighth place. So they'll want to win that game to have another shot working at the table and I think maybe at the start you'd have favoured the Cayman Islands team having seen their performance against Switzerland but now I just don't know yeah all bets are off I think you know every game's a new game isn't it you know we can all make predictions but at the end of the day the team have got to gel together well and the ball's got to go through the ring and that's anybody's game absolutely Good entry from Truman Davis already into this game. Her sister's birthday today. I'm sure she's still watching. She was watching before. Happy birthday, Ella. <laughs> I love the full family involvement, actually. <laughs> it's the same with most people, though, isn't it? Yeah. I've spoken to so many lovely mums and dads and aunties and that upstairs. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really nice to see lots of you know, people from all over the world here supporting. And online too, don't forget you can get in touch, hashtag Europe Netball. Nice shot. Gets us off the scoreboard, Truman Davis. Yeah, turnover ball, first centre pass. Gibraltar will be pleased with that. To settle them into quarter three. The defence just need to move their feet around the shooters a little bit quicker, Natalie, to take that ball. Oh, great tip. Struggling to get the ball out at the moment, the Cayman Islands. That's twice that Zania's caused them some problems. And this could be potentially three amounts of goals. There is. Lovely. Again, another nice, calm, composed circle. And Janice Moreno finding circle edge with ease. Yeah, great movement there as well from pocket to top. Trying to get in a better sh shooting position. I'm not sure they got too much further forward in fairness. Yeah, yeah. But it might be where she feels comfortable rather than the distance from the post. You know, some shooters are really comfortable mid-range, aren't they? They don't need to be underneath, underneath the post to shoot. Yeah, I think um, Israel proved that to us with uh, Komar and Bloom. They wanted to shoot wherever it was and nailed some absolute crackers from the edge. Yeah. Yeah, I think we were punished by a couple. <laughs> We won't make you relive that first quarter, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> oh, good hands. Lovely. Great hands on the outside. Just responding more quickly, I think, to the umpire's decisions as well. You know, we could have done with, you know, full defence on, on the Gibraltar team there. And we're just a little bit sleepy, I think. Oh, well taken. Feet all over the place, like Bambi then. Just managed to keep hold of it. Coming off the line of the ball is, you know, is not helpful either. When you're the ball carrier, you want somebody coming at you like a steam engine, you know, and the, ang the angle that you take the ball as well is absolutely crucial. You can't afford to veer off it because then you're going to allow the defender in to get the ball. And that's been really key in quite a few games, actually, that we've watched over this weekend. The difference between the teams being those that drive on an angle towards the line of the ball and those that drive either past the line of the ball yeah, or the way. off it. But 
credit to the teams that have capitalised on those errors as well and run through it. Great stretch over. No one still though. Yeah, they're shooting well. They look really comfortable in there, really unfazed. Lovely. Nice triangle. Lovely baseline. A goal and run from Truman Davis. I actually feel like on this uh, court we're keeping K-tape in business now. <laughs> 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 There, are, know, there know, are other tapes available. Yeah, I know that um, I know that neon uh, colours are all in it at the minute, and I think we're, we're rocking it on the netball court. Do you know what's really worrying, though? The amount of young players that we can see, you know, quite heavily strapped and taped. You know, that, that, that's absolutely fascinating. And does that come back to fitness, or are they already carrying injuries when they, when they come in? And how are we managing these young players? And I, that always concerns me as a coach, you know. Are we thinking about their, their load? And the flip side would be is, is it the fact that there's more injuries or more um, issues today or is it the fact that we're way more aware of it and therefore lots of it is preventative strapping? Yeah, I think that's a fascinating argument. I think with some physios, I think some absolutely advocate, yeah, tape, I, I, I want to put tape on everything. And there are other physios, um, uh, one close to my heart that absolutely doesn't agree with tape on and, you know, all of the proprioception that your your body has, you take away by using tape on a regular basis. So I think there are two trains of thought out there. Uh, we see that at the elite level as well with ankle strapping. Some coaches really think you should strap your ankles for every single game. Some coaches think you should never strap your ankles unless you need to. Yeah. Yeah, great shot, Truman Davis. Six goals unanswered. Let's see if Cayman Islands have got anything in them to um, turn this ball over. The changes, just to let you know, from that injury, Toy Anderson goes on to centre. Deidre Ann Gardner goes to wing attack and Ashley Logan comes back on the court. So that's good to see that she's not too badly injured. Comes back on at goal attack. I love the fact that they're massively flexible, the, the Cayman <laughs> Islands team. I don't think I've ever seen so many changes in, in one game, one full game. I'm not sure they have a choice, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think the coach is probably just like, yeah, grab a bib. Yeah, just pass it, pass it to someone on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a bit like my local league games, which one do you want to play? <laughs> Rather than a you will go and it's a who wants to go on. <laughs> Where do you want to play? Within the difference is lots of people have picked up centre here. <laughs> <laughs> I think many years ago I might have picked that up, now I put it back down again. <laughs> no, now you don't pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good rebound. A chance for the Cayman Islands. They're forcing the ball all down one side, this would be interesting. They need to open up the width of the court. Nice ball Good through. long ball in. Just off the court when she went for that rebound. I just feel like the ball is moving through the mid court too easy. And through the middle channel as well for Gibraltar then. Really nice for Yeah, they need to step up and push them away from the line of the ball. Not sure what's happening here. I think the Cayman Islands bench are probably just thinking. Oh, please, please get her back on the court because I, I'm not sure that I can go on. I don't think they look quite keen to go on either. No, none of them are moving. Caution given that. Good rebound. Lovely by Ruiz. It's good from Gibraltar that they're not phased by these stoppages. Yeah, really good for first phases from them as well, you know. Making use of the fact that Cayman Islands are putting no defensive um, effort into the centre pass defence. I'm sure that they're working through some of the tactics that they you know, want to see out on the court tomorrow, and rightly so. Yeah. McQuiston. 
to Gillingwater. Again, I'm always impressed by Janice Moreno's ability to get on that circle edge. Yeah, and she runs the pocket really well, you know, in the lovely out and in there. From Truman Davis back out to work herself to, closer to the post, you know. That, that's a hallmark of their game, isn't it? Wanting to get closer. Yeah. Oh, nice hold. Good fake to draw the jump and a lovely shot. Thumbs up from Moreno. Good that they're trying to keep them high as well. Fourth long ball. Oh. I do worry. Every time I see one of them go down, I'm wondering if they're going to be able to get back up. Oh, lovely swing. Great from Chloe Hernandez as wing defence through the court. Good, strong challenge for the rebound. I want to see the defenders respond to the umpires as well. I think that's a couple of times that they've been called for obstruction, just being a little bit untidy. Or being a little bit more disciplined might give them the opportunity to take some rebound. Contact call there against goalkeeper. She is no against goal shooter. Goalkeeper's back up. Good chase down by Anderson. Yeah, some of the attack is just a little bit pedestrian. They need to drive on to ball rather than asking for old walls and Lynch. Yeah. Great shot. Clenches the fist there. Pleased with that shot. And I'm pleased that they've got themselves off the scoreboard in uh, quarter three. Lovely Truman Davis again, front position. Good stretch by Lewis. A, a jump could be quite brutal, it's just the timing, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, Truman Davis is making use of um, her time on the ball, putting it through the ring again. Unfortunate there, footwork call. You know, again, they're just allowing them free reign through mid-court, allowing them to drive, no defensive pressure, you know, easy reset there on the line of the ball. I think there's only one defender on the line. Yeah, I mean, ideally, they need to be pushing them away from the line of the ball, forcing high ball. You know, they, they, they're great in the air, they look athletic, they can take high ball, but they're just not forcing anything to make it easy for themselves. Four and a half minutes left. Yeah, this is really hard for Gibraltar now to remain focused at, at this level. Um, and, but again, it comes back to, you know, what is their focus? Because it's not about winning the game. You know, for me, with this scoreline, it's inevitable that they're going to come out with a win. It's the quality of the win and what, you know, what targets that they've, they've set themselves, either in defence or through mid-court, you know, or from centre passes or at the shooting end. You know, and I'm, you know, they're all the things that will maintain that focus for them because it's just too easy to drift, isn't it, and start making errors yourself as a team. Time called for Tamara Oliver at the wing defence position. The most underrated position agreed. on the court. Absolutely agreed. I'm sure we'll get some comments about that shortly. And the hardest position to play, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> All that running, all that restriction, all that hard work for not much. Uh, and then you just make the goalkeeper and goal defence look like <laughs> heroes. <laughs> Big love to the wing defenders. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what a split. Oh, doesn't fall for her this time. Oh, I was hoping after that hard work that she was going to be able to put the ball through the ring. They're moving the ball, Natalie, across the court. You know, they're, they're choosing not to take it down one line. Yeah. You know, opening up the width of the court, turning the defenders' heads. You know, that was a really lovely passage of play. Oh, better timing from Lewis. But Truman Davis still sinks it. Yeah, her percentages would be quite high from this game as well. 
Oh, all players stuck there, running away. <laughs> Good hustle. Great screen there. Oh, a lovely quick ball down to the goal shooter. Fabulous by the Cayman Islands. Let's see if they can repeat it. It was on a turnover as well. Oh, just a miscommunication there. The Gibraltarians flying through the court the other way. Goodness me. I do like the left-hand side of the court. They love a swing from right to left. Put it down the left-hand side. Just a little bit behind Chloe Hernandez there, but she still manages to get control. Good pick up by Anna Hernandez. Lovely front by Ruiz. Good at the trying to expose the top as well by swinging it back to the reset. I just feel like, you know, they, they are having the run of the game. You know, Kate, the Cayman Islands are not making it difficult for them in defence at all. That's really nice for the attackers. But, you know, in some ways it feels like a bit of a training session for them, working out some of the passages of play that they, they want to use and they feel comfortable using. Long shot. Oh! Come on, if that doesn't lift you, nothing will, surely. Yeah, that was great. And great support from the bench as well. Lovely drive, great timing by Truman Davies. Yeah, and holding off the keeper as well. They made that look easy. A good response to something that could lift the opposition as well. Ooh. That's always a dangerous ball, Natalie. Two channels, diagonally, that's a defender's dream. Well, that's where you want McQuiston to go on that, isn't it? Yeah. But again, this is where I think sometimes you struggle in these games to keep that focus. So I know they've got their targets. But unless your target is to go on some of those flies, maybe at this point in time, you know, that's something that you're, you're not necessarily going to go on as much because you're not as focused. Yeah, you know, and with a scoreline of 35 goals up, you know, just waiting for the ball to come into the circle. Like you said, you're not looking for that game, that match-winning um, intercept, are you? No. Although, if it was wing defence, they would have got it, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 51 goals comes up on the board for Gibraltar. 15 for the Cayman Islands. So five goals scored for the Cayman Islands. Then 21 for Gibraltar. No, oh, another good, another really strong performance by them, isn't it? You know, just pushing on, and that's going to be really important now. I'm wondering if you know the bench are going to give themselves a target. You know, are they going to push to 70? Do they want more than 70? You know, to remain focused, like you said about that last intercept. She could have got it. She chose not to take it. Probably a, you know, a calculation from her that w we don't need it, but that might work against them now if they've got a, a goal target. As a coach, I want them to get 75. That would be my target for them. 24 and a quarter for the Cayman Islands. They need to restrict that and actually put another five on. About 15 goals from three quarters consistently. Five goals in a quarter. So I'd be wanting more out of the Cayman Islands girls. You know, so who knows what the coaches are saying. <laughs> I'd love to be a fly on the wall though. Sometimes I think we should have like little coach cams and listen to what's going on. That would be amazing. Yeah, and you know, and I'm wondering for me, you know, how, how much heart have the Cayman Islands got in this? This is a really tough game for them. It's going to be tough tomorrow morning. You know, I, I feel like they're out on the court and they're looking a little bit despondent. I don't feel like they've got fi the fight in them that they should really have. You know, when we've seen some of the previous games, people are fighting right until, you know, the last whistle has been blown, irrespective of the score. And I just don't feel like they've given us that today. I feel like they've sat back and let Gibraltar have the run of the court. And fair play to Gibraltar. They've actually taken all of those opportunities. But I just would like to see more from this Cayman Islands team. We know that they've got more in them but they really need to dig deep and find out 
the reason that they were here in the first place because that's not the netball that clearly they've been producing for them to be here so I want them to step out on the, for the next 15 minutes and show us what they've got because actually the Israel team tomorrow morning need to be you know at the minute if I was Israel I'd be really pleased with the performance that Cayman Islands are putting out because that would give me confidence before I went to see. Absolutely and on your screen right now if you scan this QR code it will give you the interactive digital program fabulous for this year that gets updated as the series goes on so what you will find is that that will tell you the placings and where everybody is going to be playing and at what time it's amazing oh, it's a great resource you know I, it's fantastic I'm, I'm scrolling through it every night looking at all of the results yeah I've watched you know some of the footage and things but it's actually really nice to have it all in one place particularly for those few people that are not here you know, and it's really lovely having a hard copy of the program, but this is brilliant. I love the interactivity of it as well. And on your screen as well, you can see all the results right now being shown from the last couple from today and yesterday. Obviously, this is the last match for today, Cayman Islands versus Gibraltar tomorrow morning, if it stays as it is. At nine o'clock, it will be Cayman Islands versus Israel. Switzerland at 11 versus Malta. One o'clock we'll see the Isle of Man play the Republic of Ireland and at three o'clock will be Gibraltar UAE. That's only if it stays with this score line. Then at five o'clock is the first placing match for seventh and eighth place. And then nine, 11 and one for fifth, sixth, third, fourth and first and second respectively. So it's amazing because it culminates in the third and fourth place match and then the gold and silver medal match at one o'clock man such an amazing weekend of netball and they'll be so close some of these games just can't call from that top four at the moment <laughs> who's gonna go through there yeah and do you know what and i love that i love that kind of competition why, why not that's what it's all about isn't it you know if this kind of competition is, it should never be a walkover. There should always be some doubt. It's like watching the Sun Cup games, the Super League games. It's really nice to actually go into the competition wondering who's going to win. I don't like it when there is an absolute front runner. It's nice when it's nip and tuck. Absolutely. And from what we talked about, maybe Plan C or Plan D, Forge Bolts are being played now so that just in case they've got their options, they have put Courtney Ferrer in at goal attack. We've seen her at goal shooter this tournament, but I don't think we've seen her at goal attack yet. Chloe Nandes, who's played at wing defence mainly, has gone to goal defence. Janice Moreno, who we've seen at wing attack mainly, has gone to wing defence. And Megan Ruiz, who has come on mainly at goal attack, has now gone to wing attack. So obviously exposing potential changes that they may make yeah, on Which is great, and that's exactly what they should be doing as a team. You know, you just missed it out there. You know, it's the strongest that I've seen the Cayman Islands actually start their game. They were then, then in possession, but again, giving away cheap ball down the bottom end, Gibraltar turned it over, and I'm sure they're going to capitalise on it as well. You know, it's silly little mistakes like that that make a huge difference. Ariana Grant has, as well has come on for the Cayman Islands out wing defence, replacing Tamara Oliver. And they do capitalise, just as you predicted. I wonder how many long ball, long balls they're going to put in. <laughs> great control there to be able to offload that. And again, 2-1 up. This is great. What a great start for them. It's a shame that they didn't start the whole match like this now. Good shot by Keenan Davis. That 53-17 now. See, it's little errors like that. When you, you know, you're given possession, every other ball, centre pass to goal is absolutely crucial. You know, to lose a ball like that cheaply, get the ball down to your shooters, service them effectively, get some depth at centre pass. You know, they're all the basics as a coach that you want your team to uh, exploit. Oh, unlucky, well chased down. But it goes off the back line, it'll give Gibraltar another shot. Lovely by Ferrer. Again, no, another shooting circle. Massively confident. Ooh, well picked up by Moreno. 
the defensive unit are just not doing everything against the shooters. You know, they're not getting front position, they're not trying to force high ball, they need to be exploiting their strengths as well. You know, they've got great height on them, they've got great elevation. They're just allowing the Gibraltar shooters to actually take front position. Oh, lovely, calm, composed shot by Truman Davis. An interception there by Ferrer. <laughs> Lovely quick one two between the shooter and wing attack. And it was really casual, didn't it? You know, back out and in one hand. Is that a kind of flair that needs to be shown throughout the rest of the game as well? Absolutely. She just made that look easy. Swing ball to Moreno. Oh, Ferrer is on the floor, but she's back up again. I'm hoping now that the circle defenders are gonna close off close off the shooters. Not just, if Truman Davis has anything to do with it. Yeah, just, they're just not strong enough in there, like using their body positions either, Natalie. Breaking that by Gibraltar. Good that they're using the reset ball, but, uh, you know, and again, twice. So good defence, big up to Gibraltar for, you know, forcing that. But again, no pressure on that pass, actually, from Gibraltar, which... Yeah, they're struggling to get the ball in. That's really good defensive move. Nope. They passed it to us. <laughs> Meg Fay just saved all the equipment. Thank you, Megan. The goal attack had a long time to think about that and managed to put it away for them. And this is turning out to be quite a good quarter for the Cayman Islands. They've already scored four within five minutes and last quarter we saw them take five minutes yeah, to get like score. I said you know that as a coach you would want them to put five on at least they've managed 15 in three quarters so at least 20 goals they've done that within the first four and if they can do that they should have been doing that from the outset you know yes Gibraltar have got a different unit on but they're you know they've got strength and depth it should have been no different if they were started with this urgency the score line could have been really different I absolutely agree I don't think that the changes for Gibraltar have impacted them too much to be honest. Yeah, absolutely not. They've got an experienced team out there. Nice pocket. Yeah, good hands. Deemed to have contacted. It's a shame that she didn't go with the outside arm. That was better, that was better urgency. And again, another calm, composed shot there. Pushing towards their target, nearly halfway through this quarter now. Let's see what they've got, see if they'll push on. Oh, it's against Hernandez. Lovely by Lynch. Oh, well held. Yes, another goal for the Cayman Islands. This shooting pair have played better than any of the shooting combinations that they've put on so far. And ironically, that is what happened when they put this shooting pair on last time. They scored the most amount of goals that they'd scored so... They just look really comfortable with each other. They've got great availability in the circle as well. I think it's Tamara Oliver that's come on a goalkeeper. Oh, great, great intercept there. That's the kind of that's the kind of ball that they should have been coming out with. You know, they've got the speed to be able to do it. Again, good effort trying to get the rebound and get into a good rebound position. Oh, great take. Use of the post. 
Right, let's see if they can turn it back over now. Give their shooters another opportunity. It really is the lack of defensive um, element, isn't it? You know, they're either doubling on the goal shooter or they're not because they were caught in no man's land there. Yeah. And even on the through court, it's just it's not it's not dictating, is it? It's chasing. Yeah, and maybe they're the things that you know they'll reflect on this video. They'll do their homework before tomorrow's Israel game, and they're the things that they need to step up on. Because you know it, Israel are, are quick through the court. Doing a good job, the Gibraltarian defence, on keeping them away from the post. They're really having to work it, aren't they? Yeah, they are. But, you know, the intensity needs to be more in there. You know, the shooter needs, should be fighting for, for position right now. She's, she, and and they're, they're just not doing that. They're not working off each other. You know, there, is no, there are no pretty moves. There's no real effort to hold. They, but, but when they get the ball, Natalie, they, they, you know, they're really effective. Oh, good rebound by Lynch. And a good rebound by McQuiston. Yeah, and another strong passage of play through the mid-court by Gibraltar. Just ping for footwork there. It's fascinating, isn't it? You know, there's quite a few, that, you know, even in this game, but across like a multitude of games, you know, I, you know as players, I think, you know, and as coaches, I think we need to look at some of that and you know work that out with our players. Because I know that certainly we were pinged for quite a few footworks, and I think the you know the players were a little bit unsure. And you know, as a coaching staff, we just said you, know, you just need to make it clear, make it easier for the umpires, make it easier for yourselves. But it is interesting that it's across all games. Yeah, it really is. There's been quite a few. I mean, some are really obvious delayed takeoffs, and they're happening towards yeah. the end of the games or yeah, when you they're know. fatigued, when the players are fatigued. Yeah. But even some that are happening early on, and I think you're right, it is, you know, it's something for all the teams potentially to look back at. Because I don't think there's any team, I would say, that has not been done for mm. footwork on you know, more than one occasion for us to go, oh, another footwork. Yeah, great long shot there from Truman Davis. Oh, I've kept in. Well done. Nice. Yeah, lovely pocket ball. Good expectation. <laughs> nice reverse hand pass there by the goal side. I love it. Six goals scored this quarter so far for the Cayman Islands. That's the most they've scored in a quarter, equaling the second quarter, I do believe. So yeah, it is. You know, in ten minutes they've put five five goals on. I'm wondering what they've got for the rest of the game. Let's see if they can make it at least 25. You know, with that shooting combination, they've got the, the ability to be able to do it. Is, yeah. How much do they want it? It also makes you think that going with this quarter, going into the game against Israel, I mean, before, not going to lie, I kind of written them off. <laughs> yeah, but actually, when they can pull, pull out a performance, you know, like this, there's a little bit more urgency, they're still too loose, but there's not a lot of structure. But, They've shown that they can do it. Yeah. That's the seventh. And it is going to be the discipline that counts, isn't it? Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> what a take by Hernandez. Yeah, and they're, they're the game changers, aren't they? You know, change the run of play. Let's put a few on them. And again, the other side, and a great take there too. Yeah, just... You know, that was just laziness, wasn't it? What, not seeing the defender's hands, not putting the ball into the space. What great elevation there to take that ball. Oh no, don't give it away. I feel like you're willing them I am. to get the 25. <laughs> and there you go, there's the next one. Come on, two more to go. Yeah, come on. It's just made it a bit more exciting this quarter, you know. It, it's lifted me. I hope they feel lifted. It hopefully lifted everybody at home yeah, as well. Yeah, and hopefully lifting them for their game tomorrow morning. You know, that, that's the key thing, isn't it? Absolutely. It makes it, a, you know, a ball game. And we've said that all the way through. Even some of these scores that have blown out haven't felt like it. I felt like through this game, the scoreline did feel like it reflected it. But now, now we're stepping up. Now it feels a bit different. 
Yeah, but similarly, you know, I would, I want, I want Gibraltar. Yeah, absolutely. But I want Gibraltar to step up too. You know, f for me, they they turned over lots of ball earlier, and I don't want them backing off now. I want them to put the pressure on the Cayman Islands. Oh, unlucky by Ferrer. It's a little bit to Truman Davis asking everyone to calm down. She can feel the shift in momentum as well. Yeah, and this could be it. This could be their 25th. Two minutes 20 to go. Let's see if they can capitalise. A little bit more depth. You know, they're giving them a little bit more room. Let's see if they can exploit it. Oh, good fight by Moreno. <laughs> they do look tired. I'm sure that they're all ready for the beds and looking at the clock and willing that two minutes to, to count down more quickly. Oh, offside there by Ruiz. Another turnover, let's see what they can do. Just inside two minutes, can they find the 25th? And equally, can the Gibraltarians claim a couple more goals for them? well seen that was great vision lovely bit of off marking oh, <laughs> that's great getting ball side taking ball trying to turn the run of play and well, the closing speed by Chloe Hernandez was awesome wasn't it to yeah, run through it and I love that you know a minute to go in there you know they are still putting them under the pump I'm sure they won't want them to score 25 goals. Long ball. And breathe. There, there it is. you go. There's the 25 that we knew that we got in. Just a shame, Natalie, that they've left it until the last quarter to show us what they, they are actually capable of when they do try. I guess the positives that you can say is that if they finish this way, maybe this is what they'll take into the game against Israel. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, that's the hope for them as a team tomorrow. You know, this should really lift them this quarter. But there's no taking it away from Gibraltar. You know, they've exploited all of the weaknesses and they've taken this game away from them, you know, and rightly so. And early on as well. Half of the psychological pressure, you could argue, is because they took it away so early. Yeah, and you, go, you should go out there. You know, in the first quarter, really, that's where you want to do your damage, and then you want to keep that all the way through, don't you? And they certainly did that. That's 26. So, Cayman Islands scoring 11 goals that quarter, and believe it or not, Gibraltar scoring 11 goals too, so that was an equal quarter. Yeah, what a great way to finish, you know. I'm sure that Gibraltar will be disappointed in the last quarter, but actually they played, they played brilliantly for the first three quarters of the game. You know, they, they deserve, absolutely deserve that win, took it away from them, exploited all the weaknesses. But Cayman Islands now should, should take heart from that. They know that they can do it. They should be able to go out there strong tomorrow morning, hopefully with a bit of sleep, a bit of rest. You know, a few massages, I'm sure, get a bit of food inside them, and they should come out strong tomorrow morning off the back of that. Absolutely, and you can see already the fantastic team here have already updated this screen for you. So that is how it stands for tomorrow. Cayman Islands will be playing Israel at 9, Switzerland versus Malta at 11, Isle of Man taking on Republic of Ireland at 1 o'clock. And look, Deb, you get a nice lion. Gibraltar taking on UAE at three o'clock. Um, I can't wait for a lion. That'd be great. <laughs> Even just to rest my voice, Natalie. <laughs> Fabulous. Amazing netball today. All the scores on the board for you. Don't forget to download that program because you will get that updated as the day goes on. Whatever you are supposed to be doing tomorrow, make sure you cancel it and get your screens turned on. But don't go anywhere yet. We will be back very shortly with the reactions from some of the players. Huge thanks to Deb in commentary. Been a pleasure, really enjoyed it. You might even hear me tomorrow, even from the bench. I don't need a <laughs> microphone. Or we might even grab her back at some point in time, depending on how busy she is, you never know. <laughs> we'll be back very shortly with the captain's interviews.
That's a great way to end. Oh, let me see that. Okay. Feeling the pressure. Oh, what a will she shoot from here? Yeah. Oh, oh what a goodness. set. Oh, nice quick hand between yeah. Gardner. Nice. Lovely shot. Them with a little bit of confidence going into half time. Oh, lovely oh. shot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> direction. So I'm here with Zany Gillingwater, defensive superstar from Gibraltar. Wow, every single game won so far. Yeah, we're so, so excited. We've, we've been training really hard and you can see on court, everyone's just performing at their best and we're, our structure up the court is exactly what we've done in training and we're really, really happy with our performance so far. And that game on court there, we didn't know what was going to happen and we said the Cayman Islands struggled from the start, but actually it's because of the scoreboard pressure that you guys placed on them really early. Yeah, so we, we prepared for this game, we've mentally prepared, we've been really focused throughout the tournament and I mean, we just went on court and did exactly what we had to do and I mean, the score showed, so we're really pleased with that performance. And it now looks as though you're going to face UAE, so uh, probably a controversial question, but is, <laughs> would you prefer to face the UAE or? I don't know, we were watching their game before and it was like, I don't know who we actually prefer to play. Um, I think both teams are going to be a tough, tough challenge, but I mean, we're ready, we're prepared, and hopefully it'll be a very good game tomorrow. And when you look at the ranking points of, of where you are, it looks phenomenal on paper, but for anyone that's been following Europe Netball, you know, this has been coming from you guys for some time. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've had a plan in place and we've been training towards that plan. Obviously, Denise from, from Netball England has been coaching us through as well, and that's really helped our game, our structure up the court and our triangles in the circle I think we're, we're really putting all that into practice and it's great to see we've worked really hard on fitness and I mean from January we weren't completely happy with how we performed and we've come back and really focused and, and really put that into practice so yeah we're really pleased and we're excited for tomorrow absolutely it's gonna be a cracking game so um, <laughs> you better go and rest up best of luck and really well done for getting to this point thank you so much <laughs> Thank you to Zania. So I do have um, Catherine Gao coming in. Rest up well. Thank, Thank you. you. From um, the Cayman Islands. And oh my goodness, hobbling in on the boot. We did hope that you'd be back fit, but um, this is really sad to see. If you can hobble a bit further towards yeah, me. Yeah. Um, that game, a tale of three quarters, and then the final quarter was amazing. What happened at the beginning? Yeah, let's talk about the end. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Um, I think we just... Difficult to settle, obviously we've had a bit of a, a few injuries, obviously uh, myself and a few others and trying to play people out of position which is difficult against a classy side. So um, I think it just took us a bit of time to settle into the game and play against the top performing side. Yeah. I mean the, the, the flip side of that is that going into Israel finishing like that means that you know you, you obviously then take in that little bit of confidence of oh my goodness look what we can do on the court. Yeah, we kind of at the third course we said, look, like let's just forget that what's gone and let's really focus on our game tomorrow. Um, we wanted to set the amount of goals which we, we hit in that final quarter, so hopefully that gives a bit of positivity going in against Israel. It was an even goal, an even game in that final quarter, 11-11. So not only was it the goal score that you wanted, you kept them to the same score as well. So that is really positive, and we were willing you on the bench to all stay fit. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I guess we've been off the court for a while, so maybe this. The fast pace is kind of hurting us and we're, we're, we're getting found out a little bit. So we've got some work to do with our strength and conditioning. I think we've highlighted that. But we also have some players at home that have got injuries late on in the season for us. So we're not kind of firing on all cylinders. So it's a shame for us, but we'll do our best when we're here. Well, it was fantastic to see that you still had that fight and that fight came out at the end. Um, but we will let you go because you're back on early tomorrow morning, nine o'clock now. Um, yeah. So rest, recover, and we look forward to seeing you back on court. Thank you. And hopefully the boot won't last too long yeah we'll see <laughs> hopefully not
Thanks so, Thanks so much. So thank you to both teams. That is the end of the preliminary. I can't even speak. 12 games in the preliminary rounds. And then obviously now we go to the playoffs and then we go to the placing. So it just hots up from here on in. Tomorrow morning we start fresh again at nine o'clock. So like I said, whatever you've got planned, cancel it. You need to be here. You need to be watching. Take care. Have a good evening and we'll see you tomorrow.